Hello everyone, it's Shell C from Paper Octia Studio and this is a gel printing explorations uh, session that um, we had as a pop-up live stream on our Art Joy of Sharing live streaming channel. Peg and I both got these um, these color shift paints. These are an acrylic paint. It's a fluid, like a liquidy paint made by Plaid Folk Art Company and um, not very expensive. I'll put a link to the set that I bought on Amazon below the video if you'd like to pick some up. There was eight colors in it and um, so I swatched them out and the interesting thing about these paints is that when you put them on white they're one color and when you put them on black they're another color. So that's why they're called color shift because it just kind of depends on what the background is, um, what varying darkness the background is as to what kind of color and shimmer you get. You always get shimmer. They're definitely a iridescent paint that's shimmering all the time. So I started out just using only the paint, the color shift paint on my plates. I have a five by seven gel plate and a six by six gel plate there on my desk. And I have the colors of the paint, which there's eight of them, uh, two inch brayer, uh, I've got some text weight white paper, like printer paper. I've got some text weight black paper. Then I have some old calendar planner that I cut up that I'm using um, as I go. And uh, I have a couple sheets of rice paper, which I'm not sure I even got to any of the rice paper. And I did use some of my recycled papers, um, ones that had paint scraped off from some other project. I think I used a couple of those, but not many. Mostly I was just sticking with trying to play with these particular paints and figure out what their properties is. So the first thing that I figured out pretty quickly is that they're, they're um, semi-translucent. Uh, so for most of my pulls, when there's just that paint, just the color shift paint and no other paint with it, if I do it on one of the calendar pages, you're going to be able to see what comes up from behind. Um, if I use another paint in conjunction with this paint, I will get more opacity, especially if it's black or titanium white or um, another color that's that's really opaque. So I do move into that after a while. I just was um, wanting to see like this one, this one is purple, but then when you put it on the black, it really shines blue, right? It's blue metallic, it's not purple at all. So. Also, when you twist it back and forth, and you'll see me doing that as I slow the camera some of the times, um, twisting it in so that it shines through the light, you can see that the color even changes within the shift of the light. So that's a, just another factor. It's interesting paint. It's it's. Uh, I have another paint that's a thicker body paint that has some of these same type of properties. Um, they're called PBO Dyna um, iridescent paints, and they've got they've got a situation where there's two different colors of mica and it shifts in the, you know, kind of, it's kind of like a combination. Maybe not quite as much as these though, but they do have a different viscosity than these. These are very liquid. They're like a craft paint, which plaid in folk art, they are craft uh, paint manufacturers. So that's not surprising. Um, the black paint, the black color shift paint looks gold when you put it on black. So it's like you put gold on there. It's, it's um, very different. <laughs> and so I was just having fun. I started to get out uh, some neutral, um, more heavier paint, like my titanium white. And using that in conjunction and using some stencils that I had, um, still hadn't put away from the last time I got out my stencils. Uh, these, all these stencils are from Stencil Girl Products. And um, in that case, I was picking up some of that black left on the plate with the white. It's not very shiny and it has kind of an interesting um, grungy industrial look that one did just because it's kind of gray and grainy and um, would be good with um, our grunge aesthetic that we were doing in January. January is almost over and we're moving on to a different theme for our art joy of sharing art community. So you'll see that coming up on February 1st, our new theme for the month. But we're still working on a hashtag AJOS grunge revival if you're playing along. 
So some of my prints turned out pretty grungy because it's gel printing and you get the crusty bits building up on the plate, which is just delicious. And um, so some were very clear. That one has titanium white that was on the plate. And then I put the colors over the, the back of that and lifted it. This one has, that's all color shift, two different layers of color shift on top of each other. That's one of my favorite ones right there. That one's really cool. And the pattern is made with a pill container. Um, I'm taking Mucinex because I've got some type of a sniffle. And that was one of the plastic pop out pill um, things that makes those ovals. I think it's a really cool pattern. So that wasn't actually a stencil, it was mark making. And that's just the leftover paint after I lifted something. Um, I think that one's rice paper. Kind of kind of light pastel on the rice paper. But just one layer on that one. So you just never know what what's going to happen. So then I got out some black um, acrylic paint, regular tube paint. I like the thicker paints on the plate myself rather than the more fluid paints. I just think that the it works better for me with that um, gel-like consistency. This is a, a Master's Touch paint on the left that's called pink. It's actually kind of a coral, um, coral color. And the prints I made with that turned out really cool. So right now I'm just lifting the paint out of the stencils. So now there's a paint underneath the stencil. And I'm going to put some of the color shift paints through the holes of the stencil and then lift it up and print it all as one, um, one piece so that the background is the original paint that I put on there. And the foreground is the shiny paint. So there's this contrast between the flatter paint and the real shimmery paint. So that's what these were about and they both turned out really cool. So one of them being on white paper, one of them being on black paper. And then I went back and there was some left on the plate, so I used my titanium white to pick up the leftovers on the plate, and that one turned out to be an interesting kind of grungy print. It has a little bit of shimmer to it. It's, it's light in color, but has just a tiny bit of the shimmery colors on there and some black, so. Pretty cool pieces, I thought. Um, that stencil is kind of like a map, so it's interesting. And then that one, of course, letters, which I should have flipped it the other way and they would have been going the right way, but it doesn't matter to me because it's not, not spelling anything. I'm just using them as a graphic element like I like to do. So this is the piece of black paper that I picked the light pink color up through the stencil. And now I'm just gonna put an overlay of the shimmery paint over the top of it. So I got out a different stencil and um, did that. I picked I picked some of that stencil up with a piece of white and then I used the black. And on the right there, I'm just getting some of the excess paint off onto the plate and it does make some marks. So I'm gonna pick those up in a bit. But that one turned out pretty darn cool, I thought. It's got those three colors of the Color Shift shimmery paints with that flatter um, letters on the top that look like they're on the top, but they're actually on the bottom. So this was the one where I picked up the paint through the stencil and I thought it needed more color. So I just put some more colors on it. And that's, that's all color shift right there. No other paint on that one. So we were having fun. We um, made a lot of prints. I don't know, I probably got 30 or 40 half sheets of paper out of this hour and a half that we did this morning. And so this is a dark purple paint, but it is a translucent paint. It's not completely opaque like the black would be. So you get a different um, reaction and put a couple stencils on there and pulled the color through to pick it out of the holes of the stencils. And then I'm gonna again put some of the color shift over the top. So I've got the flatter paint underneath and the shimmery paint on the top. Just kind of something I like to do. So the one on the left, I put the paint and then the one on the right, I lifted the excess paint and put it on there through the stencil. And I ended up getting a lot more clear print 
even though I pulled off some of the paint because it was a big globby mess. Um, the one on the left came out much nicer. Since I printed it on black paper, you can't see the purple of it, but um, it's still a very nice print. And then this one on the, the right hand side is a lot more grungy. And I printed that on a um, cut up planner paper so you can see some of the bits of the planner through it as well. But you can definitely see the purple on that one. So then um, there was just some little grungy bits left on there and I decided to pick them up using a very thin layer of the shimmery stuff and then putting, um, I think I put white over the top maybe. I can't remember if I just printed them directly or if I put white over the top. I think I put white. I don't know. I really just wanted to get like bits, bits of shimmer. Maybe it was black. We'll find out. <laughs> So I did lift up some of the paint um, to make it not so liquidy on the plate before I put the lift paint on top. So you've seen me do several different things. You've seen me do one layer after another layer to make a print, so multiple layers. You've seen me do two layers on the plate and pick it up without any pickup paint. And now I'm picking up with pickup paint. So this one, this side I'm picking up with white, that side I'm picking up with black with the opposing colors of paper. And you end up getting a little bit of the pattern, a little bit of the color shimmer in there, but it's not as pronounced. And that will be a very interesting collage paper. Same with this one. There's a little bit of shimmer, but it's not as um, crazy as full color shift paint. So then this one still had a lot of left over crusty bits and I thought well that would be fun to pick up. So I got out some more of the paints, the color shift paints, and I put them all over, um, wiggling my brayer around a lot. Also a lot of the roll-off sheets that I got were really nice too because they got all that shimmer on them too and it tends to blend the paints and make interesting colors. I did not try to to um, make any new colors with these. I think that you could, like if you put the, the pink and the yellow together, it would make an orangey coral color. Um, but I didn't do any color mixing at all, except for just on the plate. So these little grungy papers turned out pretty cool, I thought. So you've got the black underneath and then some of the shimmer. And then this had just a little bit of grunge left over, so I picked it back up with that same print. And that one almost looks like, with just a little bit of mark making, you could frame it. Because it's a very, it's an abstract. And so I was just using my frame to see what it would look like. I mean, that would take very much, very little more um, tweaking to make it into an interesting abstract piece, I thought. Simple as that. So here's some uh, yellow, light, very, very light yellow paint. Uh, I forget what it's called. Something, something light. I don't know. Anyway, I decided to uh, print cactus onto that piece that just had like the random paints brayered on it, um, on that plate on the left. And that turned out kind of interesting because I had the yellow coming through to make the cactus prints. Then I uh, wanted to darken it up. So I put some of the color shift black through and then the yellow is underneath. And then the excess paint I put on the other plate. And that one was pretty cool. And I probably should have just left it. It's a good neutral because, it, because the, the black paint looks kind of like gold on the black paper. So it was almost like it was outlined in gold. But I decided I wanted to have more color and that's just the leftover bits picked up with some yellow. I thought, oh, I want to have like like a sunset colors on this one. So I just put them on the plate and then I went ahead and went over it with my paper to try to color up some of that light yellow color. And it was not as successful as I had hoped. But it'll still be interesting in the end when I do like some uh, mark making or doodling on it. Or, you know, tracing the shapes with pens and things. Because it got too much shimmer on it. 
and not enough color. Now it's just very shiny, so when you turn it one way, you can't even see the cactuses on there. And that's a similar thing with this one. So there's those with my cactus garden stencil from Stencil Girl that I designed. So now this is Payne's Gray, a very dark blue paint that I decided to, to try out with these, you know, combining with the color shifts. Yeah, my hands were completely sh shimery, shiny, shimmery bits all over them. <laughs> it's kind of funny. So I put the stencils on, I pulled up the color through the stencil onto scratch paper. Then I put some more colors on top. And um, then the excess I put over on that side. And I had a whole bunch of that green on the top of this one. So I just picked up a little bit, bit of it with this uh, piece of tissue that has pe blue paint on it. Um, I thought it was too thick, too liquidy. And then this is a piece of rice paper that had some pink paint on it. This is when I s just take a piece of paper and I scrape excess paint that I've been using um, that I don't want to waste onto paper. And it's fun to print over the top of those as well. I just didn't, I didn't get organized enough to pull all of them out this morning when I went to do this. Or I would have had some more of the recycled, or not recycled exactly, but, you know, ones that I'm, reusing I guess. So then this time I decided to play with some blue so I got light blue paint out. That is um, just the leftover paints that I rolled onto there and then I picked up the through the stencil and that's a very pastel-y but shiny piece which will be interesting in a collage I think. Good one for that. I hope you guys are enjoying this video. If you are, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Uh, leave me a comment or a question below. Subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, turn on your notification bells if you subscribe. And of course, you can still join my channel membership for $1.99 a month. And you get exclusive content. Um, last month I did a real-time as well, a real-time edited as well as a... Um, a fast version of the project that I shared on the 15th of last month. You'll get access to that when you sign up for the membership. You can watch that older one and then on the 15th of February there'll be another one coming out. So join the membership, you know, if you haven't already that's kind of fun. You also get some uh, icons and emojis that you can use in the chats and in the comments and things. Um, that I designed and made for you guys. So then this is quinacridone gold paint that I put down first. And it's a very translucent color. Um, a very interesting color though, almost kind of like a neutral. It looks a little bit orange, a little bit rust, but uh, I don't know, it pretty much goes with everything. So I decided to try it. And so I've got quinacridone gold underneath. I put the stencils down and then I put some of the colorful color shifts over the top and I picked I picked up the paint in through the stencil and then putting the color shift through the stencil on the top like you do. And then I it was very wet and I went ahead and put a trying to put some more quinacridone gold over there, but it was just too sloppy, and it didn't um, it did not come out very clear, especially on that one on the left, unfortunately. Still interesting paper though, and it will be great for collage for tearing up and using for collage fodder. Um, but as far as the design, the design was completely shot on that one, and I kept picking up. That uh, kind of bamboo grass one is interesting too because it's got a lot of pattern on it for collage later. And then that's just my roll off piece and I picked up whatever was left on that plate with my roll off piece. And I think that these are the last ones. Um, there's going to be a flip through of all of them. So you can watch that, it's coming up right now. That's all the ones with the quinacridone pretty much. 
So I've got some that are roll off papers or printed through papers that I didn't um, necessarily slow down for. And then a lot of other ones, just all kinds of them. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, if you're interested in purchasing that type of paint, I'll put the little set, the link below um, to my Amazon store. You can always buy things from my Amazon affiliates page anytime you want to see what my, the things I use all the time, you can go over there. And I get just a, t a few cents when you do that. But, you know, anything helps. So that's it for me. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.